in essence, the difference is that government is responsible for the formulation of policy and the making of decisions. Parliament is there to scrutinize what the government is doing or proposing to do, to debate the merits or demerits of particular policies, and to question and challenge the decision makers, the ministers, the people with power. I think it was actually Gladstone as Prime Minister who said words to the effect that the business of the House of Commons is not to govern the country, but to hold to account those who do. In our system, unlike in the United States, ministers do sit in Parliament, but ministers are only a small proportion of the total number of members of Parliament. There will be a little over a hundred people who are part of what we call the government payroll in the House of Commons, but there are 650 members of Parliament. So most members of Parliament are not members of the government. Its main functions are to process, that is to say, to consider and pass legislation, the laws of the country, to debate issues and policy proposals in such a way that all sorts of different points of view can be articulated, and to scrutinise the government of the day. The government has a right to bring forward proposals consistent with what it said it would do, but it's Parliament's job to probe, to question, to scrutinise, to challenge, sometimes to contradict or even rebuke the government of the day. So that function is very important too. So it's the passage of legislation, it's debating issues, and it's scrutinising ministers, office holders, those with executive power. And it is actually the responsibility of all members of parliament to scrutinise ministers. It's not just the responsibility of members on the opposition side, it's also the responsibility of government backbench members, ordinary members of parliament on the government side, to question their own government about what they're doing, when they're doing it, and why they're doing it, and how it's working, or if it isn't working, why it isn't working, or whether it's going to be changed, and so on. That's a very important function of Parliament. We have a House whose main function is to legislate, that is the House of Commons, and to be the direct result of public preference in the form of votes at elections. And the purpose of the Lords is to revise legislation where it thinks it is necessary to make it better and to try to persuade the House of Commons and perhaps the government majority in the House of Commons to hold back from doing something if the Lords, having looked at it, thinks this is a bad idea. So that is the traditional function of the House of Lords, to revise and to delay in a public-spirited way for the benefit of the country. If we say that Parliament is sovereign, we mean that Parliament can pass what laws it likes, Parliament can make what decisions about laws or policy it wishes, and Parliament can, without fear or favour, unmake previous decisions and make new decisions whenever it wishes. It is that idea that Parliament is in control and can determine the policies of the country and the
the course that it takes. The Speaker's role in Parliament is to act as referee or umpire in the exchanges that take place in the chamber between members of Parliament, notably between people on different sides of the House. I sit in what you might call the umpire's chair and it's up to me to keep order, to encourage people to take part, ask questions, intervene in debates, make speeches. But my role is not to play for one side or the other, but to ensure that the game is played in a way that is fair and orderly. The House of Commons has always wanted to feel assured and comfortable that the Speaker is not taking sides. They all want to be able to trust the Speaker to facilitate the expression of all sorts of different opinions. I've given up party because that's what in the British system the Speaker is expected to do but I still serve as an MP. How do I do that? Well, I can't raise issues with ministers across the floor of the House because the Speaker doesn't speak in the chamber other than a Speaker, just as ministers only speak in Parliament as ministers, nothing else. But if I've got an issue I want to raise on behalf of constituents, I ask the minister to come and see me in Speaker's House, and that's what happens. People certainly do get their points put across to ministers through their Member of Parliament. I just do it in a slightly different way to people who sit as ordinary MPs and who get up and speak in debates. It's true I don't do that, but I think I have very good access to the decision makers. MPs answer letters, telephone calls, emails, maybe now and again text messages from their constituents. And members of Parliament turn up in the chamber to ask questions of ministers or to make speeches. And members of parliament also spend a lot of time in this day and age, in a way that they didn't perhaps 100 years ago, in their constituency, in the area where they've been elected. And although from the television screen you would have the impression that MPs spend a lot of time arguing with each other, and they do, they also spend quite a lot of time working with each other to advance particular subjects about which, perhaps on a cross-party basis, they feel strongly. A young person can write to his or her MP, and the first thing I'd say is, find out who your MP is, and you should be able to do that relatively easily. If in doubt, there's a phone number you can call in the House of Commons, you can say what your address is, and that way find out who your local Member of Parliament is. And I would say to a young person, if you've got a strong view about something, or if you want to know what your MP thinks about something, write to her or him. And you can access Parliament, perhaps, technologically. We have a thing called MP for a Week, which is an online game, almost, whereby students at school can learn about parliamentary life. So I would recommend all of those things. And if you're a young person who's really interested in politics and you fancy, perhaps, a possible future career. One good thing you can do, which you couldn't do when I was a young person, is to get involved with the work of the United Kingdom Youth Parliament. And since I've been Speaker, I've had the great pleasure and privilege of chairing the annual sitting of the UK Youth Parliament here in the House of Commons in the Chamber for the last four years. And I've got a very sort of simple motto or approach to this, and that is that if we in Parliament want to be respected by young people, we have to show some respect for young people. Respect is a two-way street. Mm -hmm.